Hello, hello, Crafty Candle fam. In today's video, I am going to attempt to paint with felt. I've seen a bunch of these videos and in advance of going through the process, I wanted to do a quick haul of some stuff that I bought for this process. So I bought a whole felting kit. I've got some foam, some additional felt, a really neat looking tool that's in some really weird packaging. I don't know why they didn't center this, but it's okay. I don't really need the packaging. I just need the tool. And then I bought some felt to try to felt over so that the painting has a surface. So let's jump in. Quickly, while I show you on screen what is in the kit that I bought, I also just want to address my absence. It's been a little while since I've uploaded a video. Uh, I just had a lot of things going on in my personal life, and I also have been sick for a little while, so haven't really had the motivation to create new videos, and I've actually had this video and a couple others sitting filmed but unedited because more so I just didn't feel like editing. Um, so you haven't gotten a video from me. I can't guarantee that I'll be super consistent. I'm just in the middle of, like I said, a lot of things. So it takes away from my time to make videos, but I do plan on being consistent again in the future at some point and am really excited to have found this new hobby of felting in the meantime. Felting has been so much fun. I've made a lot of really cool things with it and I think it is just a great activity that is super accessible. Anyone can do this truly. It is really easy to learn and I think you have just endless amounts of creativity with it. So here I'm just showing you some of the tools that this kit comes with, which are basically anything and everything that you could possibly need to get started. Um, I will link this kit down in the description for you if you are interested. It is not an affiliate link, so I don't get anything from you clicking it. Um, but I did buy this from Amazon and have been really enjoying it ever since. It's even better than the first felting kit that I got and has a lot more of everything, <laughs> including different colors of felt, which I thought was super important, which is why I really bought this kit as opposed to um, another like pre-made kit that only has the felt needed for the project that you're doing. This one just kind of has every color that you could possibly need. All right, I got out the felt and the mat, and then I've got all of my different colored felts here and just the ones in backup. So I think the first thing I'm going to do is cut this a little bit smaller because I don't want to make a huge painting. I just want to do a little landscape right here. That was actually a lot easier than I thought. Kind of almost easier than paper because you just hold it taut and cut right through and it's mostly straight. Now I'm going to use some of the spare needles that came in the kit to kind of hold this down because I think that'll be a good idea, hopefully. <laughs> So this part doesn't move. Ooh, I do not like that sound. That is kind of an awful sound. <laughs> one more, one more. Done. Okay, so now I should be able to just felt here in the middle. The kit actually came with a bunch of really cool stencils. So I think I'm actually gonna use this one and kind of use the, um, the little tree here and kind of make this into a beachy theme. Maybe this size one. <laughs> and then just try to paint like some water here, a beach, and I've got a bunch of woodland creatures, which I don't think I'll use, but maybe some of these clouds as well. I have pulled out all of the felt that I think I will need. So I'm gonna try to do like a gradiated sky. I need the sun, the tree, and the tree trunk. So hopefully that'll be it uh, if I need any more I've got more. <laughs> For tools, I've got my multiple needle puncher that I just got, my single needle puncher, and my finger guards. All right, I've just laid out some felt here. So this is loosely how I plan on doing this is, and maybe this won't work. I don't know. I've never tried this, <laughs> but I've just laid the darkest color here on top, overlapped a bit of it. So you can see here that it's overlapped with the next color and then same with the next color. So hopefully this will kind of create like a blended gradient but again we'll see uh, i do also plan on like tucking the ends under so that it gets a nice folded crisp edge and then i'll keep a background here uh, and then i plan on also using this for the sand color so i don't really plan on doing much with the sand other than leaving it here 
so this worked fairly well. I do think that this was the right tool to use in the multiple needle puncher. Folding the edges in did work very well. I just want to point out that the mixing that I thought would happen by overlapping didn't really happen. Okay, so it's not perfect by any means, but I'm just going to put this super thin layer of the lightest, well, the second lightest blue over top of the lightest blue to try to blend it in just a little bit more. And hopefully that'll achieve what I'm looking for. Might or might not. We'll see. <laughs> this did work much better and I would highly recommend this technique. I did also just want to leave in some like real time footage so that you can see just how long this takes. Uh, it is not as long of a process as I think creating a fully formed figure with felt. So that almost makes this a lot more fun in that it's just, it's quicker to lay down more of like a painterly style felting project, if you will. The bright yellow that I put on the bottom of this sun was completely useless, I will say. Um, but overall, I think that again, this technique of just laying thin, really thin strips and thin layers that you can see through over the top makes blending a lot easier. Just to show you like the depth that I'm working with here, <laughs> it's a pretty chunky sun. Uh, so I might need a bit smaller of a sun, but we'll see where we get with it. Um, I think I'm gonna use the single needle for this just to have a little bit more control over it and maybe like push it in on the side so that it actually makes a smaller diameter circle. Single needle was definitely the move here. It made it a lot easier to control and get those edges. Honestly, I think that turned out pretty good. I kind of like how it's not an exact, like, just yellow ball. It's got some little texture to it. Looks neat. Let's try the tree. I lied. We're gonna add some water first. <laughs> so we'll try to just add like a line or two of water here, and then we'll do the tree coming out from the beach. I'm realizing that I might need to do something with the sand, so we'll see what we do. At this point, I wish that I could have fixed the edges and like just continued to make them more square, but instead I made it bow out. I'm adding just a little bit of this color to try to make some like sparkles in the water, but I don't think I'm going to love it that much. So I'm also going to do like a layer of the blue on top to see if I can make some like definition to it. This is all just trial and error. I have no idea what I'm doing or how to do it, so this is really just like learning as I go. <laughs> Alright, I'm not mad at that. I think it kind of achieved what I was hoping to achieve. It looks at least like there's a little bit of a shimmer over the top of the water from the sun, so that's cool. Now for the tree. Let's do it. So I have a stencil here. So I think I'm just going to have to use the single needle for this, which is totally fine. I'm going to start with the stem. I'm going to do two colors so that it's kind of like like how a palm tree um, trunk is and then it's like got the little slits in it and then I've got the two different shades of green. I might need another shade of green. We'll see and we'll just kind of put it there and then maybe we'll do something with like a little sand dune right here that it's coming out of. Working with the stencil was a lot harder than I anticipated. The trunk wasn't bad, but then going into the leaves, I just, I, you cannot bunch it up like this, like I tried to do. You have to kind of do each little section individually, because otherwise you have a lot of trouble getting into the nooks and crannies of the stencil. Time for the big reveal. Did it work? Kind of. <laughs> it kind of worked. Let's fix it. Honestly, fixing it, I didn't really do too much. Um, I just kind of added some additions in the trunk, trying to add some definition, and then also tried to fix the leaves, not by fixing the leaves themselves, but just by adding some coconuts underneath because, you know, coconuts look good. <laughs> I then tried to add some green... Um, little highlights in the tree and I think it looks okay. I think that's looking kind of cool. All right so last but not least I'm going to try to add some sand. I'll use that color with just a little bit of this color kind of spread out really thinly over the top to try to add some like little like flecks of sand that are darker but 
hopefully not like overwhelmingly so <laughs> This worked decently well. I do wish that there was a way to just get like little points instead of like a whole mat of material down. And there you have it. Sand added. Although I think that the sun is a little bit too big. <laughs> I am not mad at this one bit. The only problem is I'm not positive that it's not now stuck to this, so pulling it up is going to be interesting. Let's see how that works and what the back looks like. So, overall, I think that we proved that you can paint with felt, in a way. It was super fun, I love this process, and I think it was something that I will kind of just continue to explore and get better at. Pulling it off of the mat was difficult. <laughs> and I don't really know what to do with it. Um, there is just a lot of texture toward the back. And if you have any suggestions for me as to what to do with that, please let me know. Am I just supposed to cut it? I don't know. But regardless, this was a super fun project. And I am happy to report that painting with felt is not as absurd an idea as it might have seemed. Okay, so I have to say that this felt pad foam thing worth the money because the styrofoam ones that i got in the kits you can kind of see how they just like they develop holes this was with one time of using them and they've got these big holes but this retained its shape beautifully there's no holes at all it didn't hold on like really to any of the felt i mean there's just a small ghosting of some stuff but i don't don't think that matters i really like this foam block now let's talk about this. <laughs> I don't know what to do about this. Like, do I glue the back of it? What are you supposed to do? If anyone knows, please leave me a comment to tell me what you're supposed to do with the back of your felt. I mean, it looks cool, but I don't know. Like, obviously I'm not gonna do anything with this one, but like if I were to do one that I really liked and I wanted to frame it, it wouldn't be a problem because it should lay flat enough for me to do that. But I'm just curious what other applications you guys might have for this. And if you like glue the back or something, I don't know. Let me know. Otherwise, I think this was a really successful little exercise. You can, in fact, paint with felt. Very cool. Really enjoyed this. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Give this video a like if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye.